please assemble for the 233rd Berlin Town Meeting. Doesn't look like there's anybody left to assemble, so please join me in the saluting the flag. It's behind you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. It's been a long time since we've had a, a real town meeting. I've, I've been uh, privileged to serve as the moderator for the pre-town meeting for the last three years. And I'm, uh, this will be the, if you count the years that I was that, I'm probably at 21 years of doing it, and I'm not here forever. And uh, I've always wanted to find that, it was funny, part of my responsibility is just part of the, any officer's responsibility to find their successor. So if any of you are motivated, I will help you transition into that. That being said, the first article of business is to elect a town moderator for the year ensuing. This is Article 22nd, and the, and the nominations are now open. I'll remind you there's no need for a second. It's just the nomination process. Mr. Warner. nominate Paul Gillies. Thank you. And in light of that, I will step aside and ask the chair of the select board to take over so that there's no sense of bias or prejudice here. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. Um, any other nominations for a moderator? Hearing none, those in favor of Paul Gillis? Aye. Aye. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And thank you. I, I, it's a job I have longed for for many years. I was previously in state service and I had to work on town meeting day so I couldn't even attend. And then when I was finally freed from self-service, uh, state service, I was Ruth Town's parliamentarian for a while and then I got the job. And at the time, it was a different town meeting than it is today. First of all, there was a few more people. <laughs> but it was also that we voted everything on the floor, including the budget, and I think it's a reasonable argument that the budgets should be voted by a larger number and that elections should be done by a larger number, but it does tend to drag us out of that. And so today we have three more articles. One of them isn't even an article to speak of, it's just to review the reports and the, the most provocative and and perhaps uh, best opportunity for us to serve, to talk to each other as a town will be Article 25, the uh, other business. But to go next is to hear the reports of the town officers for 2022. And if you have a booklet or if you don't, there's one back there. And I just take the opportunity to go through it page by page to invite you to ask questions about it. The select board is hungry to answer questions. Um, and the select board report is at five, page five, with the budget at uh, seven. And uh, this would cover, uh, as you can see, the basic finances of the year. Any questions about the select board's report? The assessor's report, you remember we used to have listers, but we don't anymore, so we now have an assessor and the assessor's report is there. You, any questions about that? The town clerk's office report is on 16 and 17 and 18 and 19, or actually 17. The births and deaths, number of Licenses and things. Yes. Right. Um, could you go back? I, there's a few of us here. So Matt Levin, uh, Lord Rose. Well, so you you, you also have to come up here to talk. Okay. Well, yeah. good question. So I'm. So uh, Matt Levin, uh, Lord Road. I'm tempted to ask, just in the interest of, uh, so 
being provocative, when I'm on a board myself, I often ask the treasurer or whatever, what are the one or two things in the budget that are the most interesting, right? If we were, we're doing our fiduciary responsibility of being responsible for the, the, the town's budget, if you were to point out to, because it's a lot of numbers, right? Are, are there a few places where you feel like something interesting's happening or if you were particularly paying attention to what was going on, this is something that would stand out. I, I, this is completely, I have no idea what it is because I really don't look at the budget that carefully. So if you were to say, here are a couple of things that are interesting, what might you point to for the citizens to have a sense of what's going on? And that I assume there's something interesting, but I literally don't know what that might be. The, one of the more interesting things was basically the, our uh, increased costs in our budget. Can you use the mic? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> one of the one of the big things was the increased costs in the budget, uh, and our insurance rates, which. Um, I think the board did a good job on maintaining the budget that we had control over. Our troubles are that we have a budget that's driven by outside forces such as insurances, uh, cost of equipment, etc. If you're looking at the budget, I would ask you to look at the, the, where a lot of your increases are coming from. It's, it's not that we have spent Foolishly, it's just that our expenses have just gone up like everybody else's, and you know how that is. Our fuel costs for the trucks, et cetera, et cetera. Now, other than that, I can't say as I know anything that really stands out for me. Any of the other board members have something to say? I'm Flo Smith. I'm the vice chair on the select board, and I would echo what Brad just explained. I would also point out that we did raise funding for the police department and I believe that Berlin is growing. I think we all know that and with that comes additional, additional fees. Thank you. Also echoing what Brad said, the insurances. If you look at page 11, you'll see under health insurance for the police that the budget in fiscal year 23 was $205,930. And the budget for fiscal year 2024 is 262,000. So Brad said it really well that some things are outside of our control. But when we looked at the budget, we tried to hold our costs where we could um, and not have the budget impact adversely on the residents. We are looking at the future for local options tax. And that was on the ballot before. Um, basically, it was a minimal um, amount of people that it did not pass as a result, but we are going to look at that in the future. That could help our budget uh, going forward because, as we know, things do not decrease in terms of our needs. We will always be asked for more. And so the police did ask us for more, and we looked at that in all regards. And, you know, our police force is increasing. We needed other vehicles. Um, with additional staffing comes additional costs, and so that's built into the broad budget as well. Um, so that's what I'll add, and I think maybe Joe has something to add as well. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Flo. Um, yeah, so with the, the growth of the town, there's a, a lot, there's a need of the support services like Flo was talking about, the increase. Um, I think it was one additional officer for PD. Um, but we also have administrative um, needs. And so adding uh, the assistant treasurer, um, that was a, a, an added um, position. And so you're going to see that as well um, in support of the growth of Berlin. That's a, So I'll be quick. I'll probably uh, reiterate a couple of things that the board said too, but um, just a couple of things of interest. Um, 
second year. I just crossed my second year in the job with this, come from the private sector. So the public has been a little bit eye-opening for me as well uh, on this. Uh, but a couple of things on the budget. As you all know, costs are going up. I'm going to go to the highway real quick. Um, you know, two years ago, we didn't really have, um, we had a lot of debt. Um, and we've paid that debt off. But going along with that, on a capital budget, there wasn't a lot of planning in advance for highway equipment, police cruisers and things. So there was a significant change in the budget. And when I say significant, I'm talking about $300,000 plus or minus uh, there, just to start putting money in the capital budget so we would not have to borrow money as interest rates go up, right? When it comes time to purchase a $280,000 dump truck now each year, because we're trying to do one a year and, and build a, a real plan to do that along with the police cruisers as they wear out, we need a replacement to be able to purchase that. Um, so that money is showing up in the budget to, to build that up. And then every seven to 12 years, we're gonna need to buy a piece of heavy equipment, a loader or a grader will need to be replaced, mechanical equipment that wears out. Um, so that's been a, a fairly significant change in the past two years in the budget as well that, that's had an impact. Um, as many of you are aware as well, um, we just recently went through police negotiations. We settled on another three-year contract. Um, I think it went, personally, I think it went reasonably well. It dragged out far too long, but we did reach a, a reasonable agreement. And if you look around the state, Berlin is fortunate enough to have one of the only fully staffed police forces right now um, within the state. And that includes the state police as well. Um, and I gotta say, they're a pretty good group of uh, individuals as well. Um, so we're, we're very fortunate in that respect. And I think a lot of it has to do with the, the new chief as well. Uh, there's been a morale change there in that department. And uh, the officers all seem very happy uh, to be working here as well and, and glad to be here. Uh, uh, in fact, Chief Pombriand Pont is in the back. Uh, so thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, so, and again, as, as Brad started off, insurances, just to give you an, a number, um, for some of the costs that we don't control. You'll, you'll see it in the report, but our, our health premiums, $23,870. Um, you know, there was a, a difference of, from last year's budget to this year's budget, overall of about $35,000 in cost, just for insurances and things like that. So uh, it's been a significant increase all the way around on that. Um, there was one more thing I wanted to mention, and that was our audit report. Some of you will be looking for that. Um, that dragged on for some time, it just completed. They got their final information um, last week. Uh, so that will be coming out, it will be available, uh, and it will be available on our website as well, because it, it just came out. There's, we still have to go through uh, the management review with the board on that as well. Um, there were, there were a couple of findings. Uh, I don't have them in front of me, so I won't try to talk to them. Um, but there, there were, but they were pretty much minor in nature, nothing critical. Uh, but that will be out and available uh, very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Vince. Oh, you, you, have, you have my oh, question. That's you. Sorry, I took yours. Is that a question for me? For you and the board, years ago, um, we used to give pre formal presentations about the budget. And we just stopped one year, and I'm never quite sure why. I would like to see that again. We could do it by video. I could get it done at all before you. Um, and it could be on the website so people could, because this, just this small conversation was very enlightening. And I appreciated those, those comments. So, I might be confused on this a little bit. We did hold some public hearings with the board when we were reviewing and presenting right. the budget. Right. You're saying above and beyond above a public beyond, hearing? Uh, we used to have Mike Streisberg would do, stand over there and do the school, and then whoever the chair was would do it for the select board, and it was graphs and charts. And, um, okay. And just so that on town meeting day, we, we had a good idea. Okay. So just a thought. All right. Thank you. Uh, where were we? We were at the end of the uh, auditor's report. I mean, assessor's report. That was page 
Well, no, I guess we did the clerks too. So pages 20 and 21, the Board of Civil Authority, the Board of Abatement. Uh, anybody want to talk about that? No? Berlin Highway Department, 21. Zoning Administrator, 23. Flood Insurance Zoning Administrator, 24. Stop me if you have questions. Sing it right out. Planning Commission Report, 25. Police Department, 27 through 37. Yes, Matt. Uh, would the Chief like to similarly point out any key points of the police report that might be mentioned? Sure. I, well, just as I asked about the budget, if there are just things that are of interest, if there are things in your report that you might point out to us that might be of interest. Um, I think the only real thing of interest is, it's been pointed out previously, is some of the stuff is just outside of our control um, that have cost more this year than they have in past years. Probably the most point of interest is taking on an extra officer. And the reasoning behind that is police departments have traditionally kind of ebbed and flowed with staffing. Uh, Berlin, over the last couple of years, has really struggled with maintaining staff, and that causes a stress on officers that have to cover those shifts um, and causes an increase in overtime budget. You're not getting quality enforcement or services when somebody's having to work 20 or 30 extra hours a week. Um, so kind of planning on that, we're never really at full staffing we took on an extra officer. Um, right now, we're better staffed than anybody, really, that I can think of, especially in our local area, let alone the state. Um, and it allows us to be more proactive than we have been in the last year, year and a half. Um, it allows a little bit more of a buffer for those officers. Not one officer on shift all the time taking all the calls. We have some overlap. It allows officers to kind of share those responsibilities and share that work, work burden. So I think that's pretty much the only thing of note that's a real big change in, the, in our budget in particular, is having that extra person. Yes? Do, do we still um, provide service to the hospital? We do. do. How's uh, that going? I'm just curious on the mental health side of things. There has been, as you're probably aware in the news, a, a significant increase in workplace violence at the hospital. Uh, we have historically, prior to my coming on board, had an officer dedicated to the hospital, um, and it was like an overtime shift, and that stopped happening for whatever reason, was well before my time, so I don't know really what the reasoning was behind that. Um, the hospital has asked us recently to try to be more present there, and I've tried to discuss how that would look financially, because I can't just post an officer over there out of our own budget, um, and they're not able to fund that on their own. Um, but we do try to be as visible over there as we can. Officers make that part of their kind of routine patrol to pop in and, and make sure people are good there and they're being seen. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, sort of following the incidents uh, that have occurred at the, the hilltop. Yes. Has there been any improvement in that? Are you looking at page 29? There's obviously quite a few incidents that occur at the hilltop. One was location. Is that improving at all? Over the last, we've recently have had weekly meetings with the Hilltop to kind of increase communications there, uh, along with representatives from the state so they can kind of keep an eye on those interactions. Uh, I think over the last couple of weeks there has been better communication. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if that results in kind of a downturn in our responses there, uh, but I do feel that we're there's a better relationship there now than there has been in the past. <coughs> they certainly seem to be more responsive to some of our concerns. I said, they seem to be more responsive to some of our concerns of late. Anything else? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Chief. Chief. The uh, list of the town 
of Berlin staff and their wages and benefits is on 38 and 39. Recreation Committee, 40. Conservation Commission, 41 and 42. 42 Development Review Board. And then the other reports are, not, not that you shouldn't read them, but they're not town reports, so they, they're, they're worth reading, but they're not town departments. So, uh, Any comments, questions uh, on the town report uh, in a sort? Yes, ma'am. Um, I didn't see anything in here on the town center, and I'm just wondering why it's not included here, and if there's anybody that could let us know what's happening here. I just keep hearing drips and dreads. Who's our town center expert? Sorry. Maybe it was a little bit, but it's not all Carla. There are experts on that. Tom and Carla, they're not here, so. OK, I will find out. Uh, but there was some news. Yeah, there was some news. But there was some news recently about that. Yeah. I probably can't speak too intelligently about this uh, as much as that Tom and, uh, and Carla would be able to. Um, so as you know, we're the third in the state, um, the only one outside of Chittenden County, Chittenden County that's been approved for the Newtown Center. Um, one of the, um, well, a couple of the uh, contingencies that go along with that. There's some actions that we have to take as a town with regards to that. And, and one of the stipulations is we have to have some sort of office, property, uh, located uh, within that town center. Uh, we negotiated and met with the Washington County, this, the school union district, um, for 3.8 acres. As you come in off of 62 on the Mall Road, on the left-hand side, um, to give that back to the town. And that is within days of being completed. Um, so once that's complete, um, then we have to decide what we're gonna do with that property. To, to fulfill part of the requirements that we have with the state for that new town center. Um, some of the other things that are going on in there, you heard about uh, Fox Run, I'm sure, the development, they, they're the ones that spoke today that they purchased the property from the mall, are in the process of it to put that, I think it's a 30 room unit in uh, as well. Um, there is a, There has been another application applied for another uh, restaurant coffee shop in that in that area as well uh, that's moving along and um, that's probably a, about as much detail as I can provide um, but I'm happy to uh, get something updated and on our website as well I'll have Tom and Carla do that and we'll have some some updated in, and we also have thanks to our um, tech group of clerks uh, new clerks uh, we do have a Facebook page as well where we'll be putting information on, so I'll put in a plug for that while I'm here at this time as well. Is that okay for now? Yeah, that's okay. Thank you. Yep. Back to the warning. Uh, uh, oh, so, uh, to that point, I think it would be helpful if the plan for next year for this meeting was to have someone available to be able to give a report to everyone about that. It's slow progress, so I don't expect that there'll be some big change between now and then, but even though there are only a few of us here, I'm sure we would all appreciate, even if it's just a few minutes, an update in this forum. I think that would be great. If I could also ask Paul, um, I have to admit, I have never entirely understood the relationship between the town and the fire department, and I'm not asking anyone to explain the whole thing, but I'm curious if someone could give an update on the status of that relationship, and I know in the past there were Maybe discussions about, about this? things changing. So if someone could just give us a brief update on exactly what the connection is. I don't see anyone from the fire department here. But well, okay. you have the president. The president. I, I usually see them over there. So, I, so if you could just give us a, a brief update on where things are, because I've lost track. Thank you. Great question. Been asking that for a long time myself. Um, so we have had these discussions. Um, for, for years now about the relationship between the Berlin Fire Department and the town. And, you know, it, does it, is, is it right to stay that, uh, that corporate entity um, standalone department? And, and my opinion is no, 
Um, back in the day when there was nothing but a dozen farmers out here in the town of Berlin and we had three roads, it, it seemed to be the right thing to do. In fact, no one wanted to touch it because who wanted it then? But when we're talking about the growth of Berlin, um, the, 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 you know what we were just talking about earlier, um, you go up and down the Barry Montpelier Road, we, we have new um, small communities or whatnot popping up. It, it, it only stands to reason that the, town, the fire department needs to grow um, as well. And as a volunteer, it, it is not going to happen that way. Um, I think in your report, I'm going to apologize. I think the budget, um, you see the first page, but the, um, the documentation, the supporting documentation is not, not in, in the report. And so we'll put that up on the website as well. Um, but it, there is a chart in there which um, forecasts, it shows the first, for, shows five years of call data and it projects where we see we may be going. And that is not, some of that is medical calls. It's not somebody's house burning. Um, there's just a lot of traffic coming through the town of Berlin. We, we are that intersection, okay, of central Vermont. A lot of those are motor vehicle accidents um, and a lot of alarm activations and whatnot with the growth that we have. So we've had those discussions um, and, and we're getting maybe a little more serious about it. In fact, I had my, uh, my chair ask me how close are we to having these, you know, having a, an outcome. And so I asked him, I said, I don't know, how close is the select board in having that outcome? But anyway, um, we're, we're having these conversations. And, and I think if, unfortunately, if we don't see the, the supporting documents in there, but last year we turned around and put in weekend coverage. So I have people at the station on weekends and we, we have a response time of three minutes or less. Okay, it's a lot better than the 11, 12, whatever minutes it takes for someone to get from their house to the station to your place on Lower Road. Okay, um, when you look at that supporting document, you're gonna see week, weekday shifts. And right now I got a zero in there. It's just we have to have these conversations and where are we going to be? Um, so, I don't know how close we are, but the conversations are, are going, continuing. Um, Thank you. Is there anything else? There will be more, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> Article 24, shell the town. I'm sorry. Yeah, I just, because Joe just spoke to it, I, I just wanted to ask Joe, uh, well, if there's budget information that's not included in here, which, uh, are you going to make that available on the website or? I'm going to put it, I'll, I'll give it to, to, to the yes. town to put it on their website. Okay, because I think there was a significant amount of budget information that did not get included in the report. Yeah. I found very useful. Anything else on 23 of the town reports? 24, shall the town collect its real and personal property taxes to defray the expenses of the town for the period July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024 in installments, one-fourth of the taxes to be due by delivery or by po U.S. Postal Service postmark, no private postal meter postmarks, on or before August 15th, 2023, one-fourth of the taxes due or on or before November 15th, 2023, one-fourth of the taxes due on or before February 15th, 2024, and one-fourth due on or before May 15th, 2024, with an 8% penalty and 1% interest per month or portion thereof to be charged for the late payment of any installment. Now, it's been three years since we've done this, but I need someone to say, I move the article. Bob. I move the article, 24 is written. And anyone second? Pat. And the floor is now open for discussion. And uh, if there is no discussion, you get to hear it again. Anyone? No? Shall the town collect its real and personal property taxes to defray the expenses of the town for the period July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024 installments? One-fourth of the taxes to be due by delivery 
or by U.S. Postal Service postmark, no private postal meter postmarks, on or before August 15th, 2023, one-fourth of the taxes due on or before November 15th, 2023, one-fourth of the taxes due on or before February 15th, 2024, and four one-fourth due on or before May 15th, 2024, with an 8% penalty <coughs> and a 1% interest per month or portion thereof to be charged for late payment of any installment. Are you ready for the question? Eight percent if you're late, and one percent interest, and one interest on top of that. Okay. In other years, there's been lots of debates about that, but that would be it require an amendment. I'm not encouraging. I'm just letting you know that. Anybody else ready for the question? All in favor of this article, Article 24, say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The article passes. Now we have an anomaly. In the report, there is no 25. However, I believe, if the clerk will re reassure me, the posted version has an other business article, at least the one that you handed out to me. So it's not right here, but I can assure you that you would be OK to go forward and discuss anything you want as long as it doesn't involve a binding vote. And, I, and I, one of the among things we're going to do today is we want to hear from our representatives, but Pat. Uh, I was wondering if this was the right time to talk about the uh, senior citizen person in the middle of the year. And I think Vince could talk about that. Senior we had been talking earlier, and I, yeah. to the extent that anyone takes <coughs> my legal advice anymore, you can't cram it in for Tuesday. You, can't. you need a special uh, uh, vote, an election of 30 days notice, and uh, okay. but, I, but that may be. So that would be does. a special town meeting because it yeah, also it will, includes Meals on Wheels, which is critical. I, am I, I, anybody else? I'm just talking for you. So. <laughs> no? Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. No, you're right. So we've we've had some discussion since this morning just to try to understand the best way forward to, to move this, to, to support them. Obviously, we have a feeling from the people that were here this morning and this afternoon that we want to move forward with that. The only way to do it properly after further discussion it's, is we will have to hold a, a, a special meeting on that um, and then bring it, to, bring it to a vote to the town so there'll be a special you know, vote for that as well. We've got to do the 30 days, so that's the soonest that we'll be able to do that is you know, 30 days from now is have the meetings, bring it to a vote at that point in time. So just as a point, that the, they are coming to the, we have a select board meeting Monday and they are coming as well to talk about it with the board. I'm curious about funding between now and if we pass this order, right. we can't get the money because I certainly hate to see yeah. wheels on wheels and the senior center itself. So right, and that, again, that's a question, that's a question we can, we can talk with them about, that the board can speak with them on, on, on Monday as well. So, okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, I wonder if anyone here came to town meeting today because it was on a Saturday. Or does everybody always come on Tuesday because it's town meeting day? I think we only have one example of that. It was only one year where we had town meeting and the, and the this free is time. It. I'm saying, was anyone able to come because Tuesday's a work day and they could never come to town? Just asking a floor question. Yeah, it's not very helpful. Okay, thanks. I mean, I guess if you went back to the town vote where we said we'd go to Saturday, that was an assumption people supported at the time. That was the goal, was can we get more people here? There are not more people here, but it's a Saturday during school vacation. Storm, yeah. And a snowstorm. Not a great example. Next year, I expect to see this whole hall filled. Wouldn't that be delightful? And I think mm -hmm. it would help if the select board could produce some very controversial <laughs> issues to bring them out. <laughs> Matt. Actually, I, I, could I come to the front with some Yes. Yeah. So, um, so I, I have two comments. 
One is related to what we were just talking about, one about the previous topic. Just, if I might, just some background on the, on the senior center. So, um, as I understand it, what happened is that they, they, like the other entities that are on the ballot, they missed the deadline to submit the materials necessary to get on the ballot. And there were a few others that are the usual, sus usual that we see year after year, that, that at least one other that also failed to submit on time to get on the ballot. Um, this is not a large percentage of the funding of the senior center, so it is not the case that they are in danger of suddenly ceasing operations. It is an important part of their budget, but it's not a huge percentage. So I, I, I trust the select board will move forward in whatever way is possible. But Pat, in terms of your concern that there's like, if they're not going to shut down because of this. It's not a good thing for them, but it's not. To, to get to, to Peg's point, I, I do wonder about this question of what happened, how many people are here. I was going to pose a different question to you, Paul. The, what we just voted on, Article 24, has to happen, right? I mean, if it doesn't. It, that's a, it's an important thing for the town function. So uh, the question, and then I'm going to pose a different question. The question is, what would happen if there was no one here to vote on that? Now, obviously, the select board would be here. So there would be at least some people here to vote one on One person is the town. Right. So, but I'm, I'm wondering, to get to your joke, if it might make sense for the select board and others, I'm sure as the chair of the Board of Civil Authority, we could be brought into this conversation as well. Does it make sense to try to figure out not inventing a controversy? That's not, but, but is there something we could do with programming or something else to make it so that this activity was more appealing to more people to pull them in? It, it would take some work. I'm not trying to minimize it. And it may be that we talk about it, we don't come up with anything. But it seems like it would be better if there were more people here. And so it might take some work to get a few more people here because I mean, look what happened when I said, well, tell us about the budget. And you told us about it, and then even the few people here said, oh, and that made us think about other things. So I'm wondering, in the hypothetical, what if you had a town meeting and no one showed up? There would be things that have to happen that wouldn't happen, even if it's only one article. So maybe we need to put a little bit of work into creating a little bit more something so that we make sure that that doesn't happen. Not that it's easy. <laughs> but we can at least try. In my experience, one of the things that we've done over the years inadvertently, and with the fortunately with the legislature's support, is to give more power to the state than the towns and more power to the select board than the voters. And there's a deficit. That, and I think that's directly proportional to the interest that people have in local government. Many towns, not, not, I'm not making a judgment here, don't, don't seem to dare to put policy questions to the voters. And even though that might not be in a binding way, that sometimes boards don't want to hear what the people have to say. But in order for us to have a vigorous town meeting, we need to have a vigorous electorate and it seemed to me that if we if the board were willing to share some power it doesn't have to be anything more than to see what the voters think about the direction of the common or in order a series of articles we could add here they wouldn't necessarily be binding but they would involve a, a drawing together of, of the folks that are here and and, a, uh, and an opportunity for the kind of dialogue that we started to have today so that's just one person's thought. Representative Donahue, would you like to speak to us? Uh, you need to vote to permit me? Uh, it is a pre-approval from <laughs> earlier this morning. So, and <laughs> as well, you want to come up too? Uh, thank you. Sure. Thank you for being here. Thanks. Uh, Thank you all thanks very much. A um, couple of quick things. First of all, I, I left outside, if you want to pick one up, uh, a copy of the comments I made on the House floor yesterday about Berlin and the Hilltop Inn. Um, and it really was a challenge to all of my colleagues to say we, we can't do things 
that leave some towns and the people that we're trying to help stranded. Because the people we're trying to help, if we're not helping them in the right way, if we're not providing supports, um, they're, they're not in a better environment. It's not helping them. Uh, so hopefully as we plan for the year ahead, uh, we'll, we'll do a better job. I think we're facing a lot of problems that could have been expected that because the federal government stepped in with, with COVID with so many extra dollars to do so many things, and then people get used to that as the norm and all of a sudden there's no money anymore and people are perceiving it saying, you know, well, we can't cut that, people rely on it. Um, but then that means we take over funding it, whether it's um, housing for homeless, whether it's food. Uh, you may have heard in the news recently, the supplement to food stamps people were getting are coming to an end. People have come to rely on that. So um, that's one big area that we're having to deal with. There is still lots of extra revenue uh, because of the economic impact of the COVID funds. That's all going to ebb away, and we're looking at the subsequent year as being a significant potential drop in income um, or real budget pressures. So if we increase base funding, we'll be back to looking at cuts in the subsequent year. So, you know, there's some big money items. I would love to hear, not in a public forum, but individually, send me an email. Um, I don't think we can do it all. If you think there's something particularly critical uh, with revenues we do have, let me know what your priority are because basically one is sustaining the things we have. The proposed budget has a lot of areas that have no increases, not a decrease, but not an increase. And in today's environment, that means it's a decrease. Things like funding our designated mental health agencies. Um, so increasing them to maintain against inflation it would be a huge budget item. So that's one, is our, is our budget. Number two is the House has passed a family, uh, the House committee has passed a family and medical paid leave uh, program that would pay 100% of somebody's salary for up to three months for a very broad range of needs and that would come through a payroll tax. So it wouldn't be in the general budget, but it would come out of people's uh, pay bills. I think there's a lot of good reasons for supporting that, but it's, it's a big cost involved for folks. Um, third one you've heard a lot about, and that's the um, clean heat or affordable heat or unaffordable heat, depending on what you title it. Um, I really support doing things to really attack and address climate change. This particular mechanism is a little bit, well, it's certainly untested and it will cost a lot up front for the payoff, um, you know, a decade or two or more down the line. So hearing input for that is really important for me. And then finally, childcare, which we also all know is a crisis, but proposals to put, um, you know, uh, not just tens of millions, but 100 or 200 million to better support our child care system. So I, I would really be interested in hearing back from people. Um, second big area is the legislature itself. Um, there have been a lot of discussions around wanting to increase the opportunity for people to serve and the diversity of people who serve, working families, um, and so forth, who really are not able to because of the financial pressures. That means proposals for spending a lot of money, for instance, providing uh, child care, uh, providing uh, increased um, salary levels or year-round stipends for the off-session where there's a lot of work involved, uh, health insurance, things like that. Um, certainly something to be said about it but also a real change sometimes in functioning. There's a lot of push right now to uh, extend some of our remote voting uh, opportunities that we use for COVID into regular sessions. So allowing people to vote from home if they have to stay home with a sick child, for instance, and not be present in the state house, which raises a lot of issues. That's one that's a, a big concern of mine. 
So those are some things to think about that I would welcome input. And one last thing I want to tell you about. If, if people missed it last night on Channel 6, on uh, five, 6 o'clock news, WCAX, there was an awesome little uh, feature on a 13-year-old young man from Berlin, Jesse uh, Batdorf, um, who did a great job. He was incredibly articulate uh, talking about the right to repair bill. Um, he does a lot of computer work for friends and neighbors. One of those kids you're just so proud of. You should be proud in Berlin to have a young man like this. Uh, entrepreneur, um, can't, can't do some of the repairs that he could easily do because of the uh, sort of monopoly on repairs that a lot of things come with now. He's the one who educated me about that need. As a result, I put in a right to repair bill along with some other co-sponsors, and WCAX was doing a report on it, and I said, you know, somebody ought to talk to is Jesse, because he's the one who educated me. And so they went out and did this um, feature uh, on him, and uh, he just did a great job. It, it was a really nice piece, so you might want to, you know, look up on the web and, and take a look at it, because a lot, lot to be proud of uh, that young man from Berlin. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I'll, I'll stick around. You're almost over. If people have questions or want to talk, uh, feel free. So, hello, everybody. I'm Ken Gosling. I'm your other state rep. And it's an absolute honor to represent Berlin. I love this town. It's a beautiful, beautiful community. And uh, very fortunate to, uh, to do it. Um, going back to one of the comments about uh, the lack of uptown meeting and uh, people showing up and stuff like this. I've been in, uh, I was on the select board in Northfield for 10 years. We've been constantly fighting this battle. I think in Northfield, I think we go Monday night, if I'm not mistaken, to try to get more people involved and try to get people to uh, come back more in the community. I think we keep trying to do everything. and. It's, it's, uh, it, it's sad because it's very, very important to what we try to do in Vermont. A couple things, Ann's touched on uh, a lot of stuff. The one great thing about uh, Ann and I as your representatives is we come from a lot, a lot of times different uh, ways of looking at things and dealing with things. She deals uh, with a lot of healthcare stuff. I'm more of a businessman, more of a um, uh, administrative guy. I work hand in hand with the administration, uh, governor, uh, a lot. Um, one of the big things that I, I put out there, and uh, we all do uh, update every other week. It's either Ann or I, and it's on Front Porch Forum, and I think she does a blog, and I do the Facebook thing. But we try to keep everybody appraised of what's going on. And um, this hilltop situation has been a, is a, is, is a huge problem. It's been a problem. The chief, the select board, Vince, everybody has done the job. As far as I'm concerned, where the job hasn't been done is the state. And about three or four weeks ago, it really, really came to a head, and I just happened to be at the right place at the right time. And I knew we had a problem because I have a pretty good relationship with the administration up here, and um, and uh, I knew we were finally going to act because you're putting these officers in jeopardy, you're putting everybody in jeopardy, you're putting citizens in jeopardy, you're putting the 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 um, the hospital right across the street, people are reluctant to go there, they're reluctant to go to the mall. You can see, you can see uh, uh, how many uh, situations we have right down here at the travel center. So that's finally um, being dealt with and, uh, and I'm quite optimistic that this is finally going to get under uh, control. I, I, um, I know there's, there's a lot of working pieces to this. So uh, it, it is, uh, it's been a major frustration uh, for me for a long time, and I think it's being resolved. The other thing that um, people are gonna wanna hear about, I think, is 
is the closure of, uh, of Lover's Lane Bridge in uh, Riverton and also the Route 12 Bridge uh, that's, that's going to be uh, a lot of work done and probably be replaced. Well, the good thing, uh, if there is a good thing, uh, about the 12, Route 12 Bridge being done, something's going to have to be done to route uh, to your to your lover's land bridge because there's no way you're going to get vehicles back and forth between here and Northfield. We have these uh, things called covered bridges in Northfield. You're not going over those things with certain pieces of equipment and weights of the vehicles and all that stuff. Um, paving, I think paving is is due in 24. Don't hold me to that stuff because it always gets changed and stuff like that. But You'll see a big. Uh, you're going to see a big um, uh, advancement in your roadways between Montpelier and uh, Northfield. Um, your police department. I uh, couldn't be more proud of. I think the chief has done a heck of a job, and um, it's just great. Um, the other thing is is uh, hopefully we're finally. Getting on the other side of COVID, we can get back to um, more of a regular relationships that we're work, uh, used to working with uh, face to face, which is very, very important. Uh, get out, talk to people. I usually really, really enjoy that. Um, last couple of months have been very difficult for me, but uh, I'm on my way back on that. So uh, the Hopefully we've moved on from that. The other big thing that's been touched a little bit on uh, in here that really, really needs to be uh, talked about is the affordability. We've all, everything's been dis discussed about uh, the employees' salaries and the, and the equipment, what it costs and all this stuff. The big thing, I'm a businessman, I'm a common sense guy. I, I don't have a college education. I went to CTE and and uh, I guess I got lucky, and, and uh, I kind of look at things out of common sense thing, but we've had a tremendous, tremendous amount of money coming to this state for years uh, because of Senator Leahy, or a lot of it because of Senator Leahy. Senator Leahy is retired. That money is not coming the way it used to come. So people need to really, really, I don't want to be Mr. Doom and Gloom here, but I'm a realist, and we really need to watch the money and be, um, a, a, you know, accountable for the affordability of what it's going to cost to live in this state. Um, the other thing, uh, going back to the public safety, governor is initiated, I think back in August, a 10-point safety plan. Uh, we're working on that. We have an update um, on that that just came out. Um, we're constantly, constantly going over that. We obviously we have a, a big problem um, uh, with a um, with a lot of bad things going on, and we're trying to get that under control. I introduced it's Bill H three twelve that has a lot of the governor's concerns, a lot of the administration's concerns, and there's a lot of stuff in there um, that maybe you'll want to follow. Um, what we're doing. Um, I don't want to keep you here all day, um, but um, I, I guess in, in, in closing, um, we just need a, a, what I feel is a lot better balance coming out of Montpelier, to coming to the towns, working together, um, because we're all in this together. We're all doing this all for the same reason, and that's you, the citizens, and just try to make every community in Vermont better and safer for all, because that's really what we care about. So if you have any questions, I'll be around here afterwards. I'm sorry I got here late, but uh, some other uh, situations came up, including the snow and stuff like that. But be more than happy to talk to anybody, and again, it's a pleasure. Serving you. Anybody? Question? Try to steal his report. Thanks. I may have been holding lunch for you. Thanks, Mike.
Yes, Chaplain, I'm at the window. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Ann. Our town administrator, Vince Conti, has a sermon or two. Just, just a couple, just a couple things. I want to, I want to follow up on a couple of things that I, I think are important to, uh, from from which some of the things that you brought up, Matt. things that are going on in the town, maybe that you might not be aware of, and, and things that I'm going to ask you to be aware of, I guess that that we need. So we haven't had for some time an economic development committee. They were just reestablished two weeks ago. Uh, again, we've talked a lot about the town growing. Um, it's going to grow whether we want it to or not. So. We need to be prepared for that. We need to be a little forward looking and, and manage that growth as best as we can. Um, this is gonna be one of the functions of this committee is to help us um, do it the right way, what's best for the town and, and everyone involved. Um, and an example of that is one of the first things that, that we've asked them to look at is we're growing, the staff has grown a little bit, should be stable, um, but we don't have enough room in the town office right now. We've got a job trailer outside where our listers, again, granted they're there one day a week, and our, our public works supervisor are working out of right now, out of a job trailer outside. Uh, we have a police force. It's a nine-member force, and they're crammed into one small section of the office as well. There's not, not enough room for them either. Um, so that's an immediate need. Um, one of the things that they've been asked is, what do we look like in five years, 10 years, and 20 years? and what are the plans to get there and grow smartly uh, and effectively. So that, that's something that's going on. Anybody has any ideas? Um, they're gonna be meeting every other week on Wednesday nights. Um, it's, it's a public meeting. You're welcome to, um, to, to attend those or, or even just send some input or thoughts and ideas. We'll take them all. Um, the other one that came up today that would be interesting and uh, the board and I would love to have your feedback on is your opinion and thoughts on the fire department becoming part of the town, becoming a municipal fire department again. Um, that's something, again, preliminary discussions are underway. It's gonna move forward uh, in some fashion, um, but what are your thoughts and ideas on that as well? As at some point, um, if it moves forward, it will have to be a vote um, from you all uh, to approve that to move forward. So that's something else. Um, Another thing that's very important, not just for the town, but overall, uh, that we're, we're working on is childcare facility. We talked about that 3.8 acres of land over there. We've had some preliminary discussions with the school and the, and the hospital um, about the need. Uh, there's a tremendous need just in the central Vermont area as well. Uh, again, thoughts and ideas are welcome, but that's something that we're seriously looking at from a town perspective as well, how to, how to move that forward. Uh, my next to the last one is, again, something to think about. There is a handout on the table with a lot of facts and numbers on it and some general questions around the local option tax. I know we've, we've tried, uh, the town has tried for three times now. Uh, the last one was reasonably close. Uh, Barry just passed it. There's been some articles on that lately. Um, but that's something that uh, we're going to be continuing to look at. Um, and try to get more information out to everyone to understand it, get questions back that we can answer, hopefully, um, to, uh, to, to consider. Uh, what it means to the town overall, should it pass, is about $600,000 a year in additional revenue uh, that we can use to table, stabilize the tax base and fund our capital fund with as well. Um, and then the last thing, um, our public works board, we're a town, town of board of volunteers like everyone else. Public Works Board and our DRB board would love to have some uh, fresh faces and, and new members. There's some openings there. So pass the word to anybody that may be interested, get it out there that we would, uh, we would love to fill those, those last two committees up as well. And with that, I will turn it over to our moderator. Thank you. Unless there's any questions on any of that. that I I hope you'll uh, join me in thanking these people who have worked hard for us during the year. Uh, we could go on forever, but if someone were to move to adjourn, and someone would second, and are you ready for that question? All in favor of adjournment of the 233rd Berlin Town Meeting, say aye. 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 Those opposed, no? no. See you next year, or maybe at that special. Thank you.